All right, let's try another one of these giant problems. So I have read a whole mess of stuff that said something about a factory that makes bookcases, chairs, and tables. Okay. Each thing has some stuff associated to it. So like for bookcases, I make $25 off of every bookcase. They take three hours of cutting, an hour of assembly, and an hour of finishing. To make a chair, I get $20 profit from every chair. They take an hour of cutting, an hour of assembly, and an hour of finishing. Chairs. To make tables, yeah, I make 30 bucks each off the tables. They take an hour of cutting, two hours of assembly, and an hour of finishing. And then for some reason, I have available to me 600 hours of cutting, 500 hours of assembly, and 300 hours of finishing. Why would those things happen? Like, you guys see a real world? Uh, it costs you more to so space. Much mana. Saws and the yeah, this, machines run down faster. Yeah, this is maybe sort of these are the machines I have available, or this is the labor force I have. Like, I have half as many guys that I can trust to do finishing as I do dumb dumb grunts who just do this with a chop <laughs> saw all day. Right, like, I feel like chop, like cutting, right? Probably the easiest operation. Assembly takes a little bit of brain power, but you don't have to sand anything, right? As long as it's not in the wrong spot, then you're losing money. Yeah, so, right? So I have to have at least minimum competencies, but someplace out of that combo of like machines and people comes some hours I can spend on each operation. Cool. <coughs> All right, uh, so I have all this information. <laughs> what do I need to do with the simplex method to make this thing work? Make Pink equations. Okay, first things first, I gotta make equations. So I'm gonna make how many equations? Three, four with the objections. Four, right? I've got three constraints, cutting, assembly, and finishing, and one objective equation, right? Okay, so this saves space on the board. I'm gonna kind of condense here. I've got my cutting equation, my assembly equation is going to have a 500 in it, and my finishing equation is going to have a 300 in it, right? Okay. How do you make these? How much cut time are you going to have? 600. Yeah, you've got 600 hours, right? So that's going to be bigger than or equal to how much you use up, right? Mm -hmm. How much cut time are you going to use up? Okay, so you want to call these B, K for chair, and T for table? Uh, okay. I stay away from C's as variables because they look like parentheses, right? I have a request. Oh, okay. Don't you know? If we could have the order of the chair doesn't still go. And in the equation, so I can follow along. Okay. What do you want to do for order? It's a for cutting, assembly, and finish. <laughs> cutting, assembly, and finish. Oh, you mean you're going to, what do you mean? Does it ultimately <laughs> matter what order the chair, tables, and bookcases is in? That's the... No, but what order did you use? I'll just follow your... Chairs, tables, and bookcases. Okay, so I'm going to do chairs, tables, bookcases for ordering just so it matches hopes. Yeah. So I think this is going to take one times the number of chairs I make, right, for cutting, plus... What? For table? One T. One T. Plus? One, three B. Three for bookcases. Okay. Cool. All right. How about assembly? So the total assembly time, 500, is going to be bigger than what I use. And how much am I going to use with this setup? One K. I need one K plus how much for T? Two T Tables. and one B. Two T plus one B. Okay, cool. And finishing time, I've got 300 is bigger than or equal to what? One, one, one. One, one, one? Yep, cool. So one K plus one T plus one B. 
Okay? So that's first things first, I made constraint equations. What else do I need? Objective. I need an objective equation. So these guys are the constraints. What's your objective? Are you asking me? Yeah. What does the problem say your objective is? I have 20 C or K, uh, 30 T, and 25 B equals Z. And then you draw all those on the Z side and make them negative. Okay, so you said, okay, this is the profit that I'm making, right? Z. And so I'm going to call this Z. And you're kind of jumping into the taking up the slack, right? On the simplex test, can we do the other method? No. The other method? You mean like a drawing it method? No, it won't work. Like what? the other way, optimization without the simplex. No, it won't work. Like too, many oh, yeah. too many variables. Oh, oh, okay. Right, this, this business, right, this like little blob I'm talking about, the polygon that I'm looking at, right here it lives in 3D, right? So to find the vertices, I'd have to graph this in three dimensions, which maybe isn't impossible, but is at the very least really annoying. All right, so how about, what's my next step after I wrote equations? I got an objective equation, some constraints. Now what? Add some slack. Put the slack in. So Hope said that she solved this for zero, right? So we did. All right, I'm going to subtract z set this equal to zero. Is that right? No. No. Add z, and I'm going to subtract all of these things. Okay. Okay. Then what else do I need? I need. Plus y1, plus y2, plus y3. And then what else do I want to modify here? The equality. Yeah, these should really be equal signs after I made that modification. OK, how do I turn this into a table? Just do it. Just do it. OK, so the columns in your table should be C, T, B. Y1, Y1, Y2, Y3, Z, and then Z, and then numbers. And how many, how many rows do I expect to have here? Four. One for the constraints, and then one for the objective. Okay? You guys want to hit me with what we got here? What do we got? Oh, what the heck. So I think we got 1, 1, 3, 1, 0, 0, 0, and 600. Yes? Yeah. OK. And second row, I think I got 1, 2, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 500. And third row, I think I got one, 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 zero, zero, one, zero, what? 300. 300, good. And then in my final row, I got minus 20, minus 30, minus 25, zero, 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 one, one and Zero. Okay, so what this says to me right now is what? Where's this? What am I making right now if this is the state of my factory? You're, You're doing not making nothing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Y1 600, right? So I'm not employing any cutting, I'm not employing any assembly, I'm not employing any finishing, and my profit's zero. Big surprise. <laughs> right? Yeah. If you don't turn the factory on, you're not going to make any money. Okay, so what do you target? Okay, so you go look at the what's the biggest payoff I can make, right? And so right now this is the biggest drag, so I'm looking at this column. Then what? Okay, I need the smallest quotient. So over here I got 
600 over 1. Yeah. And here I've got 500 over 2. And here on the bottom I've got 300 over 1. So I'm, what am I looking for here? I'm looking for the smallest number, which is this middle one, which tells me that what? So this business here, right, this middle row, that's the most constraining constraint, right? That's the thing I'm going to run out of first. You guys see that? That was here, right? I was looking at this minus 30. That's saying, hey, what the heck, let's make tables. You guys see that? I wasn't making anything, and then I said, hey, my biggest profit comes from tables, so that's what I'm going to start with. And then I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to use up three, whoa, no idea. I'm going to use up some cutting. I could use 600 hours of cutting on this. I can only make 250 tables, though, from my assembly time. You guys see that? I could make 300 from finishing and 300 from cutting, but assembly is the kind of thing I'm running up against first. So that's why I'm making this my most constraining constraint row. This is my pivot. What do I do with my pivot? One. Yeah, I need to make that into one. Okay. So how do I make that into one? Divide the whole row by two. Divide the whole row by two. What do I do with everything else? Leave it. Leave it. Okay, so I think I got a one one three one zero 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 six hundred. And then one 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 zero zero one zero three hundred. So those are my first and third. And then in my bottom, I've got minus 20, minus 30, minus 25, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. Cool. OK, what do you get when you divide that middle row by 2? 1 half 1, 1 half 0, 1 half 0, 0, 250. Okay, now what? Now you want to turn the two variables above and below your pivot to zero. Okay, so and I want to zero these guys out. Right? So how am I going to zero those out? Yeah, I'm going to subtract this row from each of those. You guys with me on that? Okay, so when I start doing that, First, which row can I just write down? Middle. Good, I can just write the middle row down. So uh, the middle row is rocking 1 half, 1, 1 half, 0, 1 half, 0, 0, 250. What other row can I just write down? Bottom. Bottom I'm not going to fiddle with. So I can write my minus 20, minus 30, minus 25, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0 down. Okay, now what's going to change? The top row. Okay, so top row, what do you get when you subtract? Zero. 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 One half, zero. Five halves. Five halves. One. One. Negative one half. Negative one half. Zero, zero. Zero, zero. And 350? 350. Cool. Okay. Arithmetic is probably the hardest part here. Questions on arithmetic? <laughs> no? <laughs> Show of hands for dwarf the arithmetic? <laughs> All right. Now, here, this one's going to be harder because I have to subtract vertically. <laughs> right now, they're in the wrong order. But I think we can manage. What do you get? One half. One half. Zero. Zero. One half. One half. Zero. Zero. Negative one half. Negative one half. One. One. Zero. Zero. Fifty. Fifty. We had some padding points of arithmetic problems on the test. 
Yeah, I definitely tried to write the exam to minimize arithmetic problems. I meant around it, like other problems that are just arithmetic. <laughs> oh, you mean I should <laughs> ask you just arithmetic questions <laughs> just to count? Just to count. tough right now, honestly. <laughs> I probably should. That would be fun. All right, what's my next step? You want to put the negative 3 to 0? Good. I want to kind of isolate this item, right? I really want to apply this payoff. So far, all I've done is fiddle with the constraints, right? I just kind of rephrase the constraints in terms of slack and stuff. So, how do you get that minus 30 out of there? How do you turn that to zero? Multiply row 2 by 30 and add them together. Okay, so I should multiply row 2 by 30 and write it somewhere. Okay, so I'm going to write that pink down here at the very bottom. So, multiply row 2 by 30, what do you get? 15, 30, 15, 0, 15, 0, 0, and that's the one I'm going to need help with. 7,500? 7, yeah. Okay, cool. So, now I'm going to what? Add them together. Add those together. I'm going to leave the constraints all unchanged, right? Mm -hmm. Look, which means I get to write down lots of halves. So I got a half, zero, five halves, one, minus one half, zero, zero, three fifty. I got a half, one, a half, zero, a half, zero, zero, two fifty, and one half, zero, one half, zero, minus one half, one, zero, fifty, and what else is the bottom here? Negative five, zero. Negative five, zero. Negative Negative 10. 0, 15. I'm sorry, negative 15. No. 15. Yeah. And 0, 1. 7,500. 7, Got that one right? Yeah. 7, yes. Arithmetic for the win. All right. So where are you now? Where you're only making tables. Yeah, right? That's what we set out to do. We set out to make tables. So now we're making tables, right? So I'm making 250 tables. That's why I did that quotient, was to figure out the most tables I could make before I ran into a constraint. There we go, 250 tables. That's the most I can make. It nets me a profit of 7,500, right? What do the other, what do these guys tell you? That you made no uh, shares and no fifties. No. You have 50 no? Y2s left over. You have 50 Y3s. In other words, you've got some finishing time left over that you haven't used. And then this says. You have the cutting time. I've got cutting time left over. 350 hours of cutting time left over. You guys see that? Right? There were 300 hours of cutting or of finishing time to use. I used 250 of them on tables, so there's 50 left. And this other thing is similar with cutting time. That's cool. All right. Now what? Good. Yeah, we want to figure out what our next kind of payoff is, right? So right now I've got, I could make some payoff of something on chairs, and seems like a better payoff on bookcases. So let's make some bookcases. So I want to target that thing. So that means that this is going to be my column with my pivot in it. Now I need to figure out which row my pivot's in. It's the 50. Let's see. So if I take 350 divided by 5 halves, 140. I get 140. 
If I take 250 and divide by a half, I get 500. And if I take 50 and divide by a half, I get 100. Okay, so, boom. There's my most constraining constraint now. That constraint, by the way, is a little bit different than it was originally. Okay, see that? Originally, that constraint was my assembly, or my finishing constraint, right? That bottom one. It doesn't quite mean that anymore. You guys see that? Because now it's got some, it's got two sets of slack in it, which is a little bit confusing. So don't try to read off what this equation says. It's a little bit funny. But I still can identify the pivot. What's my pivot? One half. The one half there. So what do I need to do? Make it one. You need to make it one. Okay, so let's do that. Would it be a bad idea to just change row two right now with it as it is a half? No, that would probably be a great idea. So let's do that. Okay. You guys all see that? Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to, in fact, Maybe let's just do both of those smashings right now. Right? Eventually, I'm going to have to make this zero and that zero, right? May as well do it now. So how do I do that? You saw it, Hope. Tell me what to oh, do. Well, for row two, you just make uh, row three negative and add it. OK, so I'm just going to flip the signs on that and add? Yeah. OK, so. I think we can do that in our heads without screwing up the sides. <laughs> Probably as a group we can. <laughs> All right, so what am I doing to the bottom row? Nothing? So I got negative 5, 0, negative 10, 0, 15, 0, 1, 7,500. OK. All right, now what did you want to do? Subtract one from the other. Doesn't matter anymore. Okay, cool. This one seems smaller, so let's try subtracting it from the one above it. Okay. So where am I going to put that? In this row or this row? The second row. Second row. Okay, so I got 0, 1, 0, zero which is what I was shooting for, right? Mm -hmm. 0, 1, 1, negative 1, negative 1, Zero, 200. What am I doing with the pivot row? You're not doing anything. Yeah. Okay, so I'll leave it off for now. And then what was I going to do to this top row? Uh, do you multiply the pivot row by 5 and add it? Yeah, I'm going to multiply the pivot row by negative 5 and add it. Negative 5, yeah. So if I multiply the pivot row by negative 5, I got negative 5 halves. 0, negative 5 halves, 0, five halves. positive 5 halves, good, negative 5, zero. 0, and negative 250. And that's for me to add to row 1. So if I add those together, I'm going to get negative 2, negative two 0, 0, one. 1, 2, yeah. 5 halves minus a half is 4 halves is 2, negative 5, 0, and 100. Okay, and my pivot row? Multiply multiply by two. I may as well multiply it by 2 now. So I got 1, 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 2, 0, 100 out of that, I think. Cool. No one's jumping on me about arithmetic mistakes, so I'm going to assume I did it right. <laughs> Okay, now what? Cool. So let's multiply the pivot row by 10. So that's 10, 0, 
10, 0, negative 10, 20, 0, 1,000. Okay. New table. Top is, top's the same. So I got negative 2, 0, 0, 1, 2, negative 5, 0, 100. 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, negative 1, 0, 200. 1, 0, 1, 0, negative 1. <laughs> I feel like a computer. 2, 0, 100. And then in my bottom row? 5. I have 5. 0. Zero, 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 five, twenty, one, eighty five hundred. Yes? Maybe? Yeah. Yes? Why am I excited about this state? Because I'm done. <laughs> cool. So, what happened? You don't have a bigger profit to make. Yeah, I got positive numbers all through the bottom row, right? So there's no, there's no more payoffs to be had. So this is what there is, right? You guys see that? So where am I? Like, I think this was your original question, wasn't it? Huh? Like, okay, now I'm done, but what the hell does it mean? Well, it makes more sense now that I can actually see stuff. <laughs> yeah, okay, so I'm hoping it makes more sense now that there's not a row of zeros or something. Yeah. <laughs> so I should be looking for the columns that look like columns from an identity matrix, yeah. right? So I've got those three there, which are conveniently all right together. I get this one here. So what is this one in that identity column correspond to? You have slack in your cutting variable. Okay, so let's see. If we put the labels back on here, what were my labels? K, K T. So this was K was chairs, T was tables, B was bookcases, Why then one, two, three. slack one, slack two, slack three, and profit, mm -hmm. right? And then there were numbers over here, right? Okay, so that one there is a Y1, right? So that, that guy there, I'm going to call this the first one. And that goes with this over here, right? So bubbles with a 1 in them tell you that Y1 is 100. What do the second set of bubbles tell you? You made 200 tables. Okay, that T is 200. Good. That means make 200 tables, right? Okay. What do the bubbles with threes in them tell you? Make 100 bookcases. Okay. Make 100 bookcases. Yes? Okay. And then there's this one, right? What does that one tell you? You make $8,500? Yeah, that tells you your maximum profit. Okay. So, in the end here, I should be writing a sentence about this, yes? Yeah. Like, there should be something about a factory. So, what do I know about the factory? Let me read off the last thing first, because that's kind of the pertinent piece of information, right? The max profit of $8,500 
just gotten when you made 200 tables and 100 bookcases? Is obtained by making 200 tables, 100 bookcases, and Ah, so Megan thinks I shouldn't make any chairs at all. Daryl thinks I have to make 200 chairs. I might be willing to make 100 chairs. Okay, how do you figure out how many chairs you're supposed to make? Is there an explicit statement about chairs in the results I got from my simplex method? No, there's a slap for that version line. Good, there's not a left, or there's not a statement about how many chairs you need to make. But there is a statement about, what was Y1? That was how much cutting time there is left, right? OK, so if I go back to the very beginning and pull that cutting time equation, it was 600 is twice. Anybody got that thing? 1K plus 1T plus 3B plus Y1. 1K plus 1T plus 3B plus Y1. Plus Y1. Okay, so I know what t is now, right? It's 200. So I don't need 1t, I need 200 there. And 3b? b is 3b is 300. And y1? Is 100. And so that means that 600 equals k plus 600. So k is Zero. Megan was right. Math is hard. So, and no chairs. Don't make chairs. It's a fool's game making chairs. Not working. So, it should be noted, right, that I have achieved a maximum profit, right? It is only vaguely possible like zero probability, but possible that there was another way to make this much profit that might include making some trips. What? That is extremely low probability, like actually zero. How would you go about doing it? Would you pick not the um, biggest payoff? Would you pick like half the biggest payoff and start with that line sideways? Something or? really bizarre would have had to happen for us to end up at a place where there were two maximum payoffs, right? Okay. What would have had to happen is at some point there would be two payoffs that were the same and I would have to pick one. It okay, really so is I zero can, probability. The negative 20 and the negative 25, if you made both of those negative 20 and you picked one, then the problem, then the... Yeah, so if at some point I had to make a choice about, like, there's a couple things that are equal payoff and I just get to pick one, mm -hmm. if that picking ends the problem, yeah. it seems possible that there could be a second maximum payoff. Okay. This one doesn't have that because I just followed the procedure and this is what there is. Yeah. Okay. But when you get to the end of some of these, if you made a choice somewhere, you should think about whether you've got them. Okay. How do you, is there like a specific number where it would strike odd to you, like there's not enough matrix, not matrix, uh, identity columns, there's like there's not enough, there's something wrong, or there's too many? Uh, the column of zeros that you had had me convinced that, that that was bizarre. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, that just sort of is a, like a slight alarm bell in my head saying something happened well. here that's a little funny. But yeah, if you had like two identity columns, or if you had like five identity columns. You can't. You can't. You shouldn't be able to. So if you find five identity columns, there's something wrong. Yeah. That's my question. Yeah, if there's more identity columns than you expect, then there's something happening that's bizarre. How many should I expect? You should expect to have one for each of the variables you need to specify and one for the profit. It's no accident that I started with four, vari four equations, right? And I got to four. Okay, so the variables themselves don't matter as much. It's the number of how many. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so like 
the fact that this was a Y1 and not a chairs mm -hmm. is no big deal because I can go back and recover the chairs. Okay. Right? Yeah. If I ended up with like one of these wasn't there, then I would be concerned. Okay. Okay. Cool? Yes. So, boom. <coughs> Done. Very cool. <laughs> 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 <laughs>